Raghav Indigala. In this video, we will be discussing about transaction processing and the various properties which are associated with it. First of all, we need to know what is a transaction. A database transaction is defined as a logical unit of work performed within the DBMS against a database. Here, we will be discussing about the desirable properties of the transactions. These desirable properties include atomicity, consistency, isolation and durability. These are properly known as the ACID properties. Here, the atomicity and durability are guaranteed by recovery and whereas the consistency and isolation are guaranteed by concurrency control. A transaction is considered to be atomic if it executes all the, step, all the actions in, in a single step or does not execute any actions at all. Whereas, coming to the consistency, a transaction must preserve the consistency of the database after every execution. This consistency is the role of a responsibility of the user. A transaction must be protected from the effects of concurrently scheduling other transactions. That is, concurrent changes invisible must be serializable during the isolation property. In durability, the completed updates should persist. That is, the effect of the completed transaction should persist even after a crash. Hi friends, I am Shivaram Kolipara. I am going to talk about the different ways of executing the database transactions. We have two main ways, serial execution and interleaving execution. Coming to serial execution, let us consider two transactions T1 and T2 between account A and account B. Now in transaction T1, account A sends, sends 50 to account B. Therefore, it will become 950 and 2050. And after the whole completion of T1, transaction T2 will be account A sending 100 to account B. So it will be 850 and 2150. During execution, we have two transactions T1 and T2 between account A and account B. Then account A decides to send 15 transaction T1 to account B. And immediately it decides to do a transaction T2 to send 100 to account B. Since transaction T2 starts without the whole completion of transaction T1, here transaction T2 executes first and then transaction T1 executes. Hi, my name is Lakshmi Varprasad Arsumili and I am going to talk about anomalies with interleaved execution. There are four types of anomalies with interleaved execution. They are dirty read, unrepeatable read, lost updates, and phantom read. Going to dirty read, in transaction T1, a read operation is performed, and in the same transaction T1, a write operation is performed. And in transaction T2, a read operation is performed without committing or rollbacking in T1. And then in transaction T1, a rollback is performed. Here T2 reads a data item that has never existed or never really committed. Coming to unrepeatable read, in transaction T1, a read operation is performed, and in transaction T2, a write operation is performed and then a committee is performed. And then in transaction T1, a read operation is performed. Here T2 receives a modified value or discloses the data that the data item has been inserted or deleted. Coming to last updates, in transaction T1, a read operation is performed and in transaction T2, a read operation is performed. And in transaction T1, a write operation is performed and in transaction T2, a write operation is performed. Here T2 writes out changes that the, but does not consider the changes made by T1. Phantom read, it is same as unrepeatable read. In unrepeatable read, the operation is performed a single data item. But in phantom read, the operation is performed in a group of records. Here in, here in this example, in transaction T1, a search operation is performed in the search condition. And in transaction T2, in, uh, some new records are inserted. And then a committee is performed. And transaction T1, a search operation is performed in the same search condition. Here T2 receives a modified value or discards some new records are inserted or deleted. Hi friends, my name is Ram Krishna Devanedi and I am here to discuss about the types of transactions. I am going to discuss about the flat and distributed transactions. Coming to the flat transaction is a transaction in which it is viewed as a sequence step of instructions and it doesn't contain any nested transactions. And here is the outcome for the flat transactions. Commit rollback and abort. By using commit, uh, almost 95% of the programs terminate successfully by using this command and also thus whatever the changes made will be saved permanently. About 3% of the programs are requested to terminate because of uneven conditions. Almost 1% of the programs are forced to terminate because of uneven power failure something like that. In these cases, we got, to, we got to retain the unsaved changes. So we use a concept called the rollback. But rollback is a partial. It doesn't recall all the unsaved changes. So we got to use something more than that. For this purpose, you use the save points. By using the save points, we make the program, we break the program into several pieces and we, got, we roll back to part, particular save point. Thus, the save points are useful. Coming to the distributed transactions, uh, it is a transaction in which it is in which a database is modified from different networks, something like that. The problem with the distributed transaction is does it maintain the concurrency or not? Hi friends, my name is Sanjay and in this video I am going to tell about nested transactions and chain transaction. Nested transaction. Nested transaction occurs when a new transaction is started up and that resides within the existing transaction. Uh, the subtransaction consists of uh, nested transactions or chain transactions. Considering this as an example, this is the main transaction. 
consider a flight from Houston to Mumbai has some sub transactions that's Houston to New York, New York to London and London to Mumbai and uh, these two are flat transactions and uh, this is national transaction because uh, this resides within the existing transaction so this is called national transaction and uh, chain transactions chain, chaining is the process of uh, decomposing a transaction into uh, sub transactions with intermediate commit points and the main advantages of uh, using a chain transaction is less work is lost in the event of a crash considering this as an example these are regular transactions with three transactions s1 s2 s3 with a single commit point so in the event of a crash all the work which is done within the three transactions maybe two transactions also uh, all the work uh, is lost and uh, this is the example for chain transaction it, it has uh, intermediate uh, commit points for each and every transaction so less work is lost in the event of a crash thank you